Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Mythic Mischief. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full two-player game today. Now, I do want to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button. And if you find any part of this game particularly of note for you, then please comment down below and let me know what you think. I'd also like to ask that if you would like to directly support this channel in the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and many of those come with perks like watching some videos early and advertisement free, as well as voting on which of those videos are made. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here we have the game fully set up for our two different players. Now before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes while I am showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below the video in the top comment. Before we start, I'd also like to mention that today I'm filming with a prototype version of the game, so the art and components that you see here might not match those in the final version of the game. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. As you can see, in the middle of the table we have the library board, and in the middle there is the Tome Keeper. Now, in this game, each player is in control of a squad of magical kids, and what we are trying to do is sneak around the library, collecting as many tomes as we can, while also trying to work things so that our opponents get caught by the Tome Keeper and we don't. Now, on a player's turn, we are going to use the actions that show up on these counter dice over here, and once we are done taking our actions, the Tome Keeper is going to walk towards the next one of these destination circles. When they walk, if they bump into an opposing figure, those are removed and we will gain a mischief point. And if the Tome Keeper bumps into one of our figures, then that is removed and then we lose one mischief point. After that, our opponent can go, and they can spend their actions just like we did, and at the end of their turn, the Tome Keeper will continue to move, and once the Tome Keeper reaches all three of these destinations, we will have reached the end of the before lunch section of the game, and then we will move to after lunch, where we will flip this card over, and that will change the layout of the board slightly. After that, we will continue to play the game, and in After Lunch, we will actually gain the use of a special After Lunch ability that's printed on each of our boards. Now we are going to keep playing the game until any one player has reached 10 Mischief, or until we have completed After Lunch with the Tome Keeper wandering around to all these destinations, and in that case, the player who has the most Mischief is going to be the winner. Now, as we are taking these actions, we are going to be moving our figures around the board. We can also manipulate the bookshelves that you see here, and we can manipulate the opposing pieces as well, and each of the squads have different abilities that affect all of these different types of things that we are doing. Now I will go into the details of how all of this works while we are playing, and I think at this point it's time to start the game, and for today's tutorial we are going to play as the wizards. Our opponent is going to be the monster squad over there, and we are the starting player, so we can now take the first turn of the game. Now, each of the player turns consists of three phases that we go through in order, and the first phase is the mythic phase. The first thing we do in this phase is take any of our mythics that are set off to the side of the board, and we place them back onto the board using various secret entrances, but as you can see, at this point, all of our mythics are out here on the board, and I'll talk about the details of those secret entrances later on in the tutorial. After that, we can start using our actions, and those are shown over here using these counter dice. With that in mind, let's focus over here, and as you can see, our player board is made up of four overall rows, which have the four main actions that we can take. We also have a legendary ability down here that we can use, and the after lunch special ability, which we can only use after lunch. Now, in order to perform an action, we have to have at least a one showing up on one of these counters. So as you can see, the distract action down here is associated with a blank die counter, and that means we don't have any distract actions to use during this turn, so we're not going to be doing any distracting. Now, the top row is for movement, and as you can see, we have two of these tracker dice. Now, this one shows a one, and that one shows a two, and that means that all told, we have three movement we can use during this turn. Now I think we want to start off with movement, and in particular we are going to move this mythic over here. Now each of the figures are called mythics, and as you can see, each of the players has three of them out here, and when we move, we can go onto an adjacent spot. In this game, adjacency is defined as the orthogonal spots from where you are, and when you move, you have to make sure that there is not a bookshelf in between the adjacent spots you want to move to, because you cannot move through bookshelves unless otherwise stated. Now, when we are moving, we are allowed to go onto spaces that have other figurines. So, for example, if this was here, we can move onto this, but you can never have multiple figurines stay on the same location after movement. So, that means one move would bring us here, and we'd have to use another movement to go over there, and the same goes for the opposing figures. You can move onto spaces with them, but you just have to make sure to move off of them before you end your movement, and if there are no legal places to move off, then you cannot even move onto that spot. 
Now, in this case, I think we want to move this mythic over here to the left, and as you can see, there is a clutter token there on the board. There's also a couple of these tomes, which I'll talk about soon, and whenever you move onto a spot with clutter, that's actually going to take two movement points instead of the usual one, and if you only had one movement available, then you would not be able to move onto clutter. In this case, we do want to do that, though, and we have to spend two movement, and we can do that by either spinning this one to a blank, or we could spend one there and one there. Either way, we've used two of our movement and we have one movement left. Now, at this point, one of our mythics is on a location that has one of our tomes. As you can see, there is a tome for each of the players on this spot, and whenever you move through or end your movement on a location with one of your tomes, you can take that tome from the board and then place it up here on the player board. Now, we will do something with these during the cleanup phase of this turn, and I'll talk about that later on. Well, at this point, we have one movement action left. We also have a warp action as well as a shift action, and I think the shift action is what we want to do right now. Now, as you can see, this is going to let us move the bookshelves around, and each one of the different squads moves bookshelves in a different way. Let's focus in even more, and as you can see, when we spend one action to shift, that will let us move one of the bookshelves on the same axis that it was already on, and that bookshelf has to start next to one of our mythics. Let's focus back out, and as you can see, this mythic of ours over here is one spot away from one of our tomes, but there is a bookshelf in the way. So with that in mind, let's use this one shift action, and then we can target this bookshelf and shift it along the same line and leave it over there. Just like that, we've opened up a pathway to move onto this spot, and once again, for us as the wizards, you cannot actually move things against their path. They have to go in the same line, and that worked out pretty well for us. Now, after that, we can spend our final movement and then move this mythic over there, which means we are going to collect this tome, and we now have two out of our four tomes that started out here in the library. At this point, we have one action left to use, and it's worth noting that we don't actually have to use this. If we don't spend it, then we will still have it on our next turn, but I think we are going to go for it. Let's focus in again, and this is a warp action, and this lets us move opposing figures in the library. Each one of the squads has an ability that lets you move opposing figures, but each squad moves them in different ways. For the wizards, what we can do is actually swap places with an opposing figure that is orthogonally adjacent or diagonally adjacent to one of our mythics, but it's worth noting that bookshelves can block this warp. What that means, for example, is if we were up here, we could not do a warp because that bookshelf would be blocking, but if we were over here, we could warp with this figure, swapping places, and we could warp with that one over there because there is one bookshelf, but the other side doesn't have a bookshelf, which makes this a legal warp. In this case, our mythic was right over there, and I think let's do a warp action to swap the places of these two figures. So these will swap around, and now this figure is one space closer to the tome that's just there to the left. Well, at this point, we have no more actions showing up over here, but we do have a legendary action down here on our board. As you can see, this one is special because it does not have a counter die. Instead, it has a tome token right there in that slot. While there is a tome here, we could remove that tome in order to do this action, and then we will not be able to perform this action until another tome is placed onto this spot, and I'll talk about placing tomes there later on. For the wizards, our legendary ability is called Teleport, and that would let us take any one of our mythics and move them to any open space on the board, and that space could have clutter or even a tome on it. Now, this is obviously a powerful effect, and I don't think we want to use it just now because then we won't be able to use it again until we place another tome onto that spot, and I don't see an amazing use for this at this point. So we'll just leave that there to potentially teleport on a future turn. Well, at this point, I think we are done taking actions, so that means the mythic phase is done, and we can now move into the tome keeper phase. Now, the Tome Keeper starts the game in the middle of the library, and during this phase, the Tome Keeper is going to move a number of spaces up to this value in the top right corner of the currently active card. We are currently before lunch, and that shows a 4, and the Tome Keeper is always going to be moving towards the lowest destination tile that is currently in the library. As you can see, there's a value 1, a value 2, and a value 3, and 1 is the lowest, which means the Tome Keeper is now going to move towards that destination tile. As I said, the Tome Keeper will move up to four spaces, and they are going to take the shortest path possible. Now, the Tome Keeper does have to use two movement when they go over clutter, and as you can see, they could go one, two, three, four, five, and they also have one, two, three, four, five. So both of these are equal in distance, and when there are equal options, the active player gets to decide which way the Tome Keeper will go. Now, we do not want the Tome Keeper to move onto locations with our Mythics, so we definitely want to send them that way instead of up. 
So the Tome Keeper is going to move one, two, and then they could go three, four, or three, four. As you can see, there's no difference between those two options now, but if there had been an opposing figure on either of those, then we certainly would have wanted to send the Tome Keeper through that opposing figure. If that had happened, then this figure would be removed from the board, and then we would actually gain one mythic point down here for causing one of the opposing figures to be removed. Now, likewise, if the Tome Keeper had moved onto a spot that had one of our mythics, then we would have lost one mischief point for each of those mythics the Tome Keeper reached. Just like with the opposing figures, if the Tome Keeper reaches one of ours, we also remove that figure from the board. Now, obviously, this was not removed. It is over there, and now the Tome Keeper phase is done because they have finished all four movement. That means we can move into the third phase of the player turn, which is called the cleanup phase. For that, let's focus over here. And the first thing that we do is shift all of our partially or fully used dice as far left as possible. As you can see, there's an empty spot there, and we did use this action. And we know that that was used because there are numbers above the counter dice. And if that number matched like this, we know that we had not used that at all. But obviously, since those don't match, we did use at least one of those actions. And this is now going to slide over there to the left. Once we've slid all of the counter dice we at least partially used over as far left as we can, it will then be time to add our collected tomes. As you can see, we collected two tomes on this turn, and we can add those either to these rows, or we could add them to the legendary ability if that happened to be empty. So we could have used this on this turn, and then used a tome right there to then use that again in the future. But of course, if we're doing that, we are not placing that tome onto one of the other action rows. Now, when we place these tomes down into these rows, we put them onto the leftmost spot that does not have a tome, and I think we want to start by placing this one into the move row. When we do this, we actually shift all of the dice over, and in the case of move, we do have two of those dice, and then we can put the tome right there, and it is going to stay on that spot for the rest of the game. Now we have one tome left, and I think we'll put it down over here, so we shift that counter over. And then after that, we can boost two of our ability rows. When we boost, we simply move a counter die once over to the right for each boost. And in the case of these move dice up here, we obviously cannot boost this die until that one is boosted. So we can move that one over there for one and that one there for two if we wanted. But I think instead, let's actually boost this shift die two times to the right. Of course, we could have shifted this once and shifted another one once, but I think I like the idea of boosting this one twice. After that, we have to reset all of our action counter dice to match the number that's directly above them. So that means we can spin this to a 2 and this one to a 3, and just like that, you can see we are going to have 5 movement points on our next turn compared to the 3 that we had during this first turn. We can look over here, and we are going to have one warp action, and then here we are going to have two shift actions, and remember, if we don't use any of these on our next turn, this will actually stay there. It only shifts over to the left if we use at least one of these. Finally, our distract die will go up to a one because we did put that tome over there, and that's finished our cleanup phase, which means that has also finished our turn. This means it's time for our opponents, the monsters, to go. And as you can see, they actually started the game with one tome on their board. The second place player gets to place one tome onto one of these rows of their choice, and they started up here in the move, so that means they actually get five movement for their first turn compared to the three that we had. Well, they're going to start off with movement, and they're going to use one of those to move onto this spot here, and then they have one of their tomes on that location, so they can add that onto their board. After that, our opponent wants to use their throw action, and this is the one that lets them interact with their opponent's mythics. When we zoom in, you can see that this lets them take an ally that is either orthogonally or diagonally adjacent to them and throw them to the opposite side, but just like we saw with the warp effect, this can be blocked by bookshelves. So they're going to spend one action to throw, and they will use this mythic here, and they are going to target our mythic on that spot, and they are going to throw our mythic to the opposite side all the way over there. After that, they are going to move this mythic over there, and that's onto a cluttered spot, so that is going to use two of their movement. Then they will move this one up there using another move, and after that, they've decided to use Intimidate, which is their legendary ability. That means they have to remove the tome that was on that ability from the game. After that, they can perform this legendary effect, and it says that a neighboring enemy moves two spaces towards the Tome Keeper, but it's worth noting they cannot move the enemy onto the Tome Keeper's position. Now, the term neighboring means any orthogonally adjacent or diagonally adjacent spot that is not blocked by bookshelves, and in this case, they are going to use this mythic here, 
and our mythic on that spot is neighboring, and they are going to intimidate this mythic, moving them up to two spaces closer to the Tome Keeper, and they're just going to move one space, but one space is realistically all that they need. After that, they're going to use their final movement to go onto this spot. Remember, they cannot stay on this spot while our mythic is there. Of course, they could have moved through an enemy figure with one of those tomes on that spot to take the tome, but they liked this effect more for reasons you are going to see shortly. Now, at this point, they are going to take this tome and place that onto their board, and they are done with their actions. They do have this barge action over here to use, which lets them move bookshelves, but they've decided they don't need to use it. That being said, let's take a look over here and see how it would work. If you remember, the wizard's shift action lets us move the bookshelves along the same axis they are on, but for barge, this is going to target a bookshelf that is directly next to one of the monster figures, and they can then barge through the bookshelf, moving it onto one of these indicated spot options. At the moment, the monster player does not see a good play for this barge action, so they are going to save it and use it at some point in the future. The monsters are done taking actions, which means it's now the Tome Keeper phase, and once again, the Tome Keeper is going to move four spaces towards the next lowest destination. At the moment, the lowest destination is still one, so that means that the Tome Keeper is going to move onto this location, and obviously one of our mythics is on that spot. Remember, our mythic is only there because the monsters intimidated that mythic onto the spot and put them into the way of the Tome Keeper, and of course that means this mythic is removed, and then the monsters are going to gain one mischief point. Now the Tome Keeper has only used one of their four movement, and now they can remove this destination tile since the Tome Keeper reached it. And now the Tome Keeper will move three more times towards the next lowest token, which is the two down here. That means the Tome Keeper will go one, two, and just like that, they have reached another location with one of our mythics. Remember, that mythic was thrown over there by the monsters, so the monster player was able to put two of our mythics in the way of the Tome Keeper during their turn. That means the monsters will gain another mischief point, and the Tome Keeper now has one more movement. From this position, the Tome Keeper could go down or to the right, but going to the right would cost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 movement, whereas to the left it would cost 1, 2, 3, so the Tome Keeper will take the quicker route and move the final time onto that spot there. The Tome Keeper phase is done, so now the monsters can perform cleanup, and they could put one of these tomes down here onto their Intimidate action to then be able to perform this again in the future, or they could leave it open and use this tome on one of their action rows. In order to make this decision, I think let's talk a little bit more about how we are going to win the game. Now, so far, the monster player has received two mischief points, and as you can see, this track goes all the way up to 10. Now, if at any point any player reaches 10 of these mischief points, then the game ends with that player being the winner. What that means is our opponent has already gained 20% of the mischief points they need to win the game, but obviously they can lose mischief points if the Tome Keeper reaches any of their mythics during their turn, and that's something we will obviously all try it very hard to avoid. Now it's possible that none of us might reach 10 mischief points at any point during the game, and there is another way the game can end. Now at this point we are in before lunch, and these three destination marks show where the Tome Keeper is going to go, and once the Tome Keeper reaches the third destination, we are going to move to after lunch, and we are going to place three more destinations out. At that point we will keep playing through the game, and if the Tome Keeper ever reaches the third destination during after lunch, then the game will be over, and the player who has the most mischief points will be the winner. With all of that in mind, I'm sure you can tell that Mischief Points is really the thing that we are focusing on. These tomes are good for increasing our abilities to get these Mischief Points by getting out of the way of the Tome Keeper and by pushing our opponent's Mythics into the way of the Tome Keeper. Let's focus back over here, and this Intimidate effect is a great way for the monsters to actually gain Mischief Points by intimidating our Mythics into the way of the Tome Keeper, and because of that, they are going to place one of their two tomes onto that spot to try and gain more Mischief Points by intimidating us towards the Tome Keeper. Now they have one other tome to place, and they're going to put it up here on their Throw Row, and then after that, they can boost two of these rows. After considering it, they are going to boost Throw as well as Distract. Now the next thing they can do is reset all of these counter dice to match the numbers above them. So they are going to have five movement points. They will also have two Throw actions at their disposal. And then down here, they will have one Distract. Remember, this die did not shift over to the left because they did not even partially use it since the number on the counter matches the number that's directly above it on that row. Well, the monsters are done with their turn, which means we can go, and remember the first thing that happens during a mythic phase is we can bring mythics that are off the board back onto the board using secret entrances. Now these entrances show up on the current card that we're using, 
Right now, it is before lunch, and as you can see, all of these circles are secret entrances that we can use to place our mythics back on the board. After thinking through our options, I think we are going to bring this mythic onto that secret entrance there, and this one will use that secret entrance. There is some clutter there, but that's fine. We can go onto that spot. We only could not use a secret entrance if there was a, another mythic on that location or the Tome Keeper. After that, we can start taking actions, and I think we want to make sure the Tome Keeper is going to catch at least one of the monster mythics. Now we can definitely do that by moving a bookshelf around, and let's start by using one movement to move this mythic here. Now we are next to that bookshelf, and we can shift that bookshelf by spending one of these actions, and we can shift it over there, and just like that, we can see that the Tome Keeper is now going to walk around here trying to get to that destination, and they are certainly going to enter this spot and find that monster mythic. Of course, our mythic is currently on that destination, which is not great, so I think let's use another movement to move off of that spot, and this does seem risky being right next to where the Tome Keeper is going to go, but we can see that after that, the Tome Keeper is going to want to head over there, and I think we should end up being safe. Now we know the Tome Keeper is going to move four times, so they are going to go one, two, three, four, and they will be one spot away from this destination. If we have our turn end like that, then it's possible our opponents could use this Intimidate to move our Mythic onto that spot, just like what happened on the last round, and then have them gain another Mischief Point. So I think I'd actually like the Tome Keeper to reach this location, and we can make that happen using the Distract action. The way this works is for each distract action that we use, we can move the Tome Keeper one space towards any one of our mythics. So we can focus back out, and I think we will distract with this mythic there, and in order for the Tome Keeper to move one space closer to them, they are going to move onto this spot here. That means that the Tome Keeper is now going to go one, two, three, four spaces, and I think that is going to leave us much safer. And we put a Tome over here, so we are going to gain another distract action on the next turn, so I figured there was no reason not to use it. At this point, we have three movement left, one shift action and one warp action. And I think let's spend two of our movement to move this mythic here, and that will let us collect one tome. After that, I don't think we want to leave the mythic there because they are certainly going to be in the line of movement from the Tome Keeper. So let's use the warp ability to swap these locations. And now that puts the opposing mythic in the Tome Keeper's current line of movement. Now I suppose that did move this mythic onto a spot with one of their tomes, which isn't great, but this game is all about gaining mischief points, and we want to increase the chances as much as possible that we gain those by putting the opposing mythics in the way. Well, we have one movement and a shift left, and we are going to lose this shift if we don't use it, because as you can see, we've partially used this counter, because it shows a number less than the number directly above it. So that means this is going to slide all the way over there no matter what, so I figure we may as well shift once, and I think we are going to shift this bookshelf to make it even more likely that the Tome Keeper stays in the bottom half of the board. After that, we have one movement left, and we don't have to use this, but I think we should. And let's just move over there so that we give our opponents less good options for their Intimidate action. Well, I think we are done taking actions. For the moment, we are still not going to use our Teleport action. This means it's time for the Tome Keeper to move, and they are going to move four times. So they will go one, two, three, and then four. That means we will gain one Mischief Point which brings us up to one, and then this token can be removed, and the Tome Keeper now wants to make it all the way over there to that three. The Tome Keeper phase is done, so now we can clean up. We are going to slide this all the way over to the left, and now we can add this onto one of the rows. And I think let's add this into the warp row. After that, we get two boosts, which lets us move a die once to the right, and I think we'll do this so that we have two warps to play with on the next turn. Warp is a really good way to try and position things to put the opposing pieces into the Tome Keeper's line of movement. We have one more boost to use, and I think we'll boost this there so that we can at least shift one bookshelf on our next turn. After that, we can set all of these dice to match the numbers above them. And now the monsters can go, and they have to start by placing this mythic onto an unoccupied secret entrance location. After considering the options, they are going to use this secret entrance, so they will start there. And now the first thing that happens is they will collect this tome, because that mythic started on that spot with their tome, because we warped them over there. After that, they are going to use one of their movement to go here, and then they are going to barge, which lets them move a bookshelf. In particular, they are going to barge this bookshelf here, and that is going to move it onto either this location or that, and they're going to barge it over onto there. After that, they are going to throw our mythic from this spot to the opposite spot over there. 
And then after that, they are going to throw this mythic from that spot to the opposite spot, just like that. After that, they are going to use two of their movement to move this mythic there, and then another move in order to go onto this spot. And then they will use their one distract action in order to move the Tome Keeper one space closer to one of their mythics. They will use this mythic here, and the Tome Keeper will move one space closer, which brings it right there. Next up, for the second time in the game, they are going to use Intimidate, which means they remove this tome from the game, and now they can target one of the enemy mythics that's neighboring theirs, and they move it two spaces closer towards the Tome Keeper. Now this does say spaces, not move actions, and what that means is for this action, the clutter counts just the same as a regular space. They are going to target this mythic and move it one, two spaces closer to the Tome Keeper. The next thing they are going to do is use a movement, and they are going to head over there, and they've actually decided to stop using actions. They are not going to use this distract action they have loaded up on their board. That means it's time for the Tome Keeper to move, and they are going to move four times. So as you can see, that's going to be one move here, which is going to get the monsters one mischief point, and the second move brings them there. So once again, they've been able to have two of our mythics be caught by the Tome Keeper during this phase. That's going to get them another mischief, bringing them all the way to four, and they are doing quite well for that. And then the Tome Keeper will move two more times. After that, they can clean up which means these are going to slide, but this one won't because it is not partially used at this point. Now they have one tome that they can use to either upgrade an action row or reactivate their intimidate action. After considering their options, they're just going to add this over here. And now they can boost two dice. They are going to move this one there, and then they'll move this one up once. And now they can reset their dice to match the numbers above. So it looks like they are going to have six movement available to them in the next round of the game. They will also have two throws, one barge, and the one distract that they had from the last round. Well, it's our turn again, and we can start by bringing two of our mythics back onto the board using these secret entrances. And I think we'll have one enter at this secret entrance here, and the other one can enter over there. Now we really want to try and catch some of these monster mythics at the end of this turn, and it looks like our opponent is pulling away to a pretty sizable lead. Now we can see the Tome Keeper is just one space away from the final destination for before lunch, but we don't shift to after lunch until the end of a Tome Keeper phase. Now if a Tome Keeper reaches a destination and has more movement, they are going to continue moving back to the central crest, and we can use that to our advantage to try and catch some of these monster mythics. Let's start things off with a warp. We have two of these actions available, and that means we can use this to swap those two, and I think that's going to put this mythic into the line of movement from the Tome Keeper. Now that's only going to happen if we move a bookshelf, and we do have a shift loaded up over here. So let's use two of our movement, and then we can use this shift, and that will let us move this one space up or down, and I figure we will shift this down. Now that means the Tome Keeper is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and it is set up to catch two of these opposing mythics. Now of course, our mythic is in the way, but fortunately we do have three movement left, so let's use one of those to move up here, and then I think let's use the other two in order to move this mythic one, two spaces in order to collect this tome here. We can place that onto our board. And then I think we're actually done taking actions. We have a warp available, which would let us swap with one of the opposing figures, but I don't see a reason to use that right now. And we have a distract, but we already have the Tome Keeper lined up to catch a couple of these, so I think we are good to go. Of course, we do have this teleport that we could use right now, but I don't think we need to desperately get out of the way. I think using that to get ourselves into a position to warp would be a better thing for us, and I'm not seeing a situation out here where we could use the teleport and the warp in order to catch all three of these opposing mythics. So, let's move into the Tome Keeper phase, and they are going to move four times. So that means they will go here, which will remove this token, and then with no destination tokens out here, the Tome Keeper will head over to the crest. So the second move will go here, and the third and fourth move will bring them onto this clutter. So that means we are going to gain two mischief points, which brings us up to three, and that's finished the Tome Keeper phase. Now at this point, there are no destination tokens out on the board, which means we are going to shift from before lunch to after lunch. The first thing we do for this is remove any tomes that are still on the board. So this one right here will be removed. And then we will flip the before lunch card down and then flip the after lunch card face up. Now let's take a closer look at this because as you can see, it has new locations for tomes. So that means we will place one tome for each player on these three spots. So that means ours will go here. 
and then three green will go down onto the board onto the same locations. After that, we have to add the destinations back, and we place them on the after lunch side instead of the before lunch side. The first destination will go down here, the second one will go all the way up here in the top right corner, and the third destination is going to go over here. Now we can place this back at the top of the board, and as you can see, when we are in the after lunch phase, the Tome Keeper is only going to move three, whereas they were moving four during the before lunch phase. Well, let's now move on to our cleanup phase, and we have one tome to place. The first thing we have to do is slide this over as well as that one because we partially used it. And then we can add this tome, and I think let's add it to the move row to increase the amount of moves we get. After that, we can boost two of these dice, and I think let's boost warp as well as shift. Now, after that, we can reset these dice to match the numbers above them. And that's finished our turn. Now, before we move on to the opponent's turn, I'd now like to draw your attention to the after lunch special. Each of the squads has a specific ability that they can use only once we reach the after lunch part of the game, and that is where we're at. Down here for the wizards, it says that once per turn, we can place one of our portal tokens under one of the wizards, and these portals act as adjacent to other portal spots. So that means once we get both of these out, that will make it easier to move from one side of the board to another. And once these are both out, you can use this special to move an already placed token underneath one of the wizards. Well, it's time for the monsters to go, and before we actually see their turn, let's take a look at their after lunch special effect. This one is called Trap, and it says that once per turn, they can trap an adjacent enemy. Now, they have to place this token down underneath that enemy, and on the following turn, that enemy cannot move out of this spot, although they can use other abilities besides move, such as Warp or Teleport. Well, the monsters now get to go, and they do have to bring these mythics back onto the board, and as you can see, the secret entrance locations have actually changed from before lunch to the after lunch card. So these are the new locations that they can use to enter the board. They've decided to use this secret entrance there, as well as that one down there. And now they are going to use a movement to go here. After that, they are going to use this trap, that has to go onto an adjacent spot with an enemy, and they are going to trap this spot right here, so that means on our next turn, we cannot use a move action to move this mythic off of that spot. Next up, the monsters are going to spend a movement in order to go here, and that will get them one of these tomes. And then after that, they are going to use a movement to go here to pick up a tome, and then they will use another movement to go there, and just like that, they've picked up all of their tomes that were on the board. In fact, these are the last tomes that they'll have available to them for the entire game. Now they have two movement left, and they want to make sure they are not leaving one of their mythics on a spot where we could swap with them to get away from that trap. So they are going to use this movement to go back there. And then they will use one last movement to go over there. And they've actually decided they're done with their actions. They had two throws to use, but based off of this current situation, they didn't see a great way to actually utilize those, as well as this barge or the distract. So they're going to move into the Tome Keeper phase. And since this is after lunch, the Tome Keeper will only move three times. So that is going to be one, which is going to give them one mischief point, And then two, three, bringing them on top of that clutter. After that, they can clean up. So they can start by moving that down, and now they have to do something with these tomes right here. They have decided to put this down into Intimidate so they can use that again. And then after that, they're going to add one into Move, and then they'll put this final one into Barge. After that, they get two boosts, and they will put one of them into Barge, and then they've decided to put the other one into Move. All right, now they can reset these dice, and now it's time for us to go. We can, of course, bring this mythic on first, and we have to enter on one of these secret entrances. And I think we will appear right there in the center. Now, after that, we can start taking actions, and the one thing to keep in mind is we are not allowed to use move actions to move off of the trap. That trap is right over there, and we could warp off of it, but I think instead, let's actually start with a shift action, and we can just shift this bookshelf over there using this mythic, and now our trap mythic should be safe from the Tome Keeper's movement. With this new setup, the Tome Keeper is going to go 1, 2, 3 with their moves. So, I think we should move 1, 2, 3 times, and then use a warp in order to swap these locations so that this mythic will be caught by the Tome Keeper. And then after that, let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, which uses the last of our movement. 
and then we can use another warp so that we've swapped these two positions. That is going to let us collect one tome, and we've set this up so that the Tome Keeper will catch two of the monster mythics. Now we have one distract left, and we could use it to move the uh, Tome Keeper one spot, but I don't think that's actually going to help us out overall. Well, at this point, we have one action left, and it's a distract action, and I think we should use it. And let's distract based off of this mythic here. That means the Tome Keeper is going to try and reach them, and they will move once, so that means right now, this mythic will be caught, which will gain us one mischief point. After that, we could teleport if we wanted to, but I still think I want to save that. But before we move on, I do think we should use our After Lunch special. That lets us place this underneath one of our mythics, and I think that this might be a better position for us. So let's place that right over there, and then on the next turn we can place this down, and then these two tokens, wherever they are, will then be considered adjacent for us for the purposes of movement. Well, we are done with actions, so now the Tome Keeper phase will happen. The Tome Keeper is going to move three times, and they are trying to reach this destination. So that is the path, and they will go one, two, which is going to catch a monster mythic and get us one mischief point. And then the Tome Keeper will move one more time. After that, we can clean up. So these will slide down, and now we have one Tome that we can add. I think with this, let's actually add it to shift so that we will always have one shift action to move those bookcases around. And now we get two boosts. With these, I think we'll boost shift and warp once. And now we can reset our counters. Well, the monsters can start things off by placing their mythics back on the board on secret entrance locations. They've decided to place this one there, and this one will enter through that secret entrance. Now the monsters can take actions and they will take this trap token back and they can use this again on this turn to place it underneath an adjacent enemy mythic. The first action they are going to do is a move action to go here and then after that they are going to barge this bookshelf. Now they are going to barge it like this and then after that they are going to move two more times. Next up, they are going to throw, and that means they can take this mythic and throw them to the opposite side, which means we could pick up that tome if that mythic is still there at the start of our turn. But I think that is unlikely considering the current Tome Keeper's path. As you can see, because this bookshelf got shifted over, the Tome Keeper is now going to want to go 1, 2, 3 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4. So they have put this mythic into that path. Of course, they are also in that path, and with that in mind, they are going to use yet another move in order to head right over there. After that, they are going to move this mythic one, two, three times. So that means they have one move left. And then they are going to throw again. And this is going to throw our mythic directly to the opposite side. And unfortunately, the Tome Keeper is on that spot. So they threw the mythic right onto that location. And the Tome Keeper obviously caught us. So our mythic will go to the side and green will gain yet another mischief point. After that, the monster player has decided to use a move. And then they're going to use their final barge action in order to barge this bookshelf over like that. At this point, they could distract, but they've decided against it, and they are also not going to use Intimidate, so they are just about done with their actions, although they haven't placed this trap. And remember, the trap can only go onto an adjacent enemy, and they currently don't have any adjacent enemies, so it looks like they aren't actually going to use their After Lunch special trap action on this turn. Now it's time for the Tome Keeper phase, and the Tome Keeper will move three times. So they will go once, and then obviously this is the preferred path because that's quicker. So the second move will bring them here, and that is going to get them yet another mischief point, bringing them all the way up to seven. And then the Tome Keeper will move one more time, bringing them to the one destination. So that means the Tome Keeper in the future is now going to be heading up here to the two in the top right corner. After that, it's time for the monster player to clean up. So they can slide these dice over. And now they get two boosts, and they are going to do the same thing they did last time, boosting barge once and their move once. Now they can set all of their counters to match the numbers above them. And now we can take our turn. We have two mythics to place using these secret entrances. And I think we should appear in the middle as well as down here at the bottom. Now we know the Tome Keeper is going to go one, two, three, and we want to get as many of these monster mythics onto that path. I do see a way to get two of them, but unfortunately I don't think we can get all three onto that path. Let's start things off by moving, and we'll go here, and then I think we will put our other portal token onto this location. After that, let's spend a movement to go here, which lets us pick up this tome. And then let's spend another movement to go back here. And now let's use both of our warp effects. 
This one will let us warp like that. And then this one will let us warp like that. And just like that, these two are in that path. If we had another warp, I think we probably could have been able to figure out a way to get this one over there by moving some of these bookshelves around, but we only had two warps to work with. Now, a way to gain more warps is to get more of these tomes, and one advantage we could try to leverage in this game is the fact that our opponent has used their Intimidate a couple times, and we have yet to teleport once. So we have a chance of being stronger over here by adding those tomes to our actions instead of using them for one-shot actions like the green player has. With that in mind, I think we should certainly spend another one of our movement to go here, which is going to pick up our final tome of the game. Well, at this point, we have a couple of shifts to use, three movement as well as a distract, and we are not going to be able to get more mischief points out of this turn, so we should probably spend the rest of our energy trying to play defensively so that the monster player is less able to score points off of us. Now, I don't think we're actually going to use any shifts. That way, this die won't move, and we can use our boosts for other things and still have both of those shifts for our next turn. And instead, I figure let's just use a movement to go over there, we can then use another movement to go there, and let's use our final movement to go onto that spot. The reason we're doing this is because we are trying to cover up some of these entrance locations to make it harder for the monsters to appear back on the board, come over, and throw us into the path of the Tome Keeper. Now we do have a distract that we can use, and I think we will use that, so the Tome Keeper will move one space closer towards this mythic. And now we are done with our actions. We are once again not going to be using our teleport. So the Tome Keeper phase can happen, and they are going to move three times. So that's going to be one, two, and then at this point, the Tome Keeper cannot actually move anymore because they need two movement to enter either of these clutter locations. So we gain two mischief points, which brings us up to seven, and then we can clean up. The first thing we do is slide this down, and now we have two tomes that we can add. Now, if we look at these numbers, realistically, the big thing that's jumping out to me is that it would be great to get up to three warps, because those really let us move our opponent's pieces around. In order to make that happen, we could put one tome like this. That means we will always have two, and we could use our natural two boost to get this up to three. We could also put this right over here, and then we need just one boost to get up to three, and I think that is what we are going to do. All right, we're done with our turn, and the monsters can go. And we currently have a tie game, with each of us being just three mischief away from winning the game. Now, the monster player does have to start by placing these mythics back onto secret entrances. And interestingly enough, most of these entrances are currently blocked. These two are blocked there. The Tome Keeper is blocking that one, and their own mythic is blocking that. So that means that these are the only spots that they can go to. Now, if you have a situation where there are no unoccupied secret entrances, then you can use any space in the library that's not currently occupied by another mythic, the Tome Keeper, or a Tome. That's not quite the case right now, so we can see these mythics will enter on at the two currently available secret entrances. The monsters can now use their actions, and they are going to start by using one of their move to go here. Actually, that will be two of their movement, because that was cluttered. And then they are going to throw this mythic over onto that spot there. The monsters can do quite a bit more stuff, but actually before that happens, I just realized we forgot to actually finish up the cleanup over here. So let's do that, and then come back over here and see what they do for the rest of their turn. Specifically, we forgot to take our boosts, and we also forgot to reset our counters. We were certainly going to be boosting this to get up to a 3 warp. And then with the other boost, I think we'll just move this over there, and then these can be reset to match their current column. Next up, the monster player is going to use this movement to go there, and then they will throw this mythic onto that spot. And that means both of these are right next to the Lore Keeper, but fortunately for us, the Lore Keeper is not going to be going through both of those spots. They will just be going through one. It looks like the monster player decided they still wanted to use that throw to get our mythic closer to the Lore Keeper as they are trying to corral us over here to try and not only get mischief points this turn, but on future turns as well. Now, at this moment, the monster player has decided they're actually not going to perform any more of these actions. This 5 is a lot of movement they could use, and since they didn't use any of it, it won't slide down. That means they can save this for the next turn, and the same can be said about barge, as well as distract down here. This is quite a bit of things they could do, but none of those seem to actually get them more mischief, so they'd rather save them for next turn, when they could potentially be able to get a game-winning number of mischief. So, they're going to move on to the Lore Keeper phase, and the Lore Keeper moves three times. Now, it's going to want to move here, and the shortest path 
is through that. So it will move here, which will use two of its movements, and that will get the monsters one mischief point. So they are now up to eight, and then the lore keeper will move one more time, and obviously it could go there, but the monster player wants it to go over there instead. The lore keeper phase is done, although before we move on to cleanup, I'm just going to say that the monster player did want to put this trap down during the mythic phase, and they would have put it right over there. So now they can move on to their cleanup phase, and they do not move any of these dice down because none of them are even partially used. Next up, they get two boosts, and they've decided to put both of those into their throw, getting them up to three throw, which they're hoping will be enough to put themselves in a position to win on their next turn. Now they can reset all of these counters. And then it's time for us to go. Now we are three mischief points away from winning the game. So if we were to somehow be able to get all three of these opposing mythics over here, we could win the game on this turn. But I don't think that is going to be the case, even with our three warps. So I think we're going to try to pick up some mischief and then play a bunch of defense to make it hard for our opponent to get the two mischief they will need on their next turn to win the game. First things first, we do have to bring this mythic back onto the board, onto a secret entrance, and we could go here, there, or there. After considering these options, I think we will bring that mythic on over here, and now let's start taking actions. Now we know that this mythic is trapped, but we can use a warp ability to get away from that trap, and I think let's go for it. Let's use one of our warps to do this. And then the next thing I think we should do is finally use our teleport. That is going to remove this tome from the game, and we can move one of our mythics to any unoccupied spot. And I think we want to move right over here. Obviously, we could have moved this mythic one, two, three, four times to get over there, but I felt like this was a good time to teleport over there instead of spending those moves. After that, we can use another warp in order to swap these around. So we have put this mythic in the path of the tome keeper. And then after that, let's take this mythic and move one, two, three times. So that means we currently have five movement left, and now we can use one of our shift actions, and we can shift this bookshelf over like that. Now the current goal is to have the Tome Keeper also catch this mythic, although before we actually do that, let's now use Distract. That is going to move the Tome Keeper one space towards one of our mythics, and we will obviously use this one. So the Tome Keeper will move here, trying to get closer, and that is going to catch this mythic. That's going to get us one mischief point, so we are up to eight. And we know this Lore Keeper is going to move it three times. The first move will bring them there, and then after that, they are going to be heading down over here. And the quickest path is going to be up along the top, not going down the bottom. So with that in mind, let's use another one of our movement so that we can go here, and then we can use our third and final warp of this turn in order to warp these like that. Now, unfortunately, we are once again trapped, but we have put this mythic in the line to be caught, and we do have one shift left and some movement, so I think let's go over here, and then let's use this shift to slide that bookshelf over there. We did use two of our movements, so we have two left, and now I think let's use a movement to go here, and then one more movement to use this portal to head down over there to try and get as many of our mythics as far away as possible from where the Tome Keeper is heading. Overall, I think that was a pretty good turn, and now let's move on to the Tome Keeper phase. They are going to move it three times, and the first move will bring them here, and then the other two moves will bring them one, two, and that is going to gain us one more mischief, bringing us up to nine. So we are just one mischief away from winning the game, and we are realistically just hoping to be able to get another turn so that we can try to get that final mischief. Of course, that will only happen if the green player doesn't win on their next turn. The Tome Keeper phase is done, so now it's time for a cleanup. These are going to slide down, and now we can reset all of these counters. Actually, before we reset these, we do get two boosts, and I think we would boost this and that. So this should be a three, and that should be a five. Well, our turn is done, which means the monsters can go, and they need just two mischief to immediately win the game. Of course, the first thing they have to do is bring these two mythics back onto the board. They've decided to enter here as well as over there. After that, they can start taking actions, 
and they are going to begin by moving, and then they will use Intimidate for the third time in the game. This lets them target a neighboring enemy, and that enemy has to move two spaces towards the Tome Keeper. They are going to target this enemy mythic and move it one, two spaces, where it is obviously right in the path of the Tome Keeper's movement. After that, they are going to move down here, which is actually going to take two of their movement, and then they are going to barge through this bookshelf, and the only option they have is to barge it like that so that it swings over to this location. After that, they are going to throw this mythic directly over them. Just like that, they have two of their enemy mythics in the Tome Keeper's path. So unfortunately, it looks like they're just going to stop taking their actions. They had more than they actually needed. Uh, I think what actually happened here is we probably should not have spent so much effort getting two of the opposing mythics captured on the last turn. We probably should have just focused on one and then played a lot more defense. Because as you can see, with them not taking any more actions, the Tome Keeper is going to move three times towards this destination, and that will be one two, and then three. So just like that, they are going to get two more mischief points, which brings them to 10, and that is exactly what they needed. So that brings the game to a close with the monsters winning. It was really close there, and as I said, I think if we'd focused on getting just one mischief point instead of two on our last turn, and then tried to just move as far away as possible to make it really hard for our opponent to get two points on their turn, we might have been able to extend the game to one more turn, where we could have potentially gotten two mischief points of our own to win the game. Either way, that completes a 1v1 game of Mystic Mischief, and that is also going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to play this game, and please leave a comment down below about what part of this game you found most interesting, as well as if you thought there was a turn where something else should have happened that would have been more strategically beneficial for one of the players. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.